All right, so are you ready to dive into something really cool? Today, we are exploring loams. Loams. Yeah, loams. You know, all this buzz about AI being the next big thing. Well, yeah. loams is open source, and it lets you use these powerful large language models, not just let, you know, right. talk about it, but actually do things. Like write code, create art, even compose music, all from your computer. It's like having that direct line to the AI. Oh, wow. Which can be pretty complex, right? Yeah. But what's fascinating about Loams is how it takes those complexities and makes it accessible to you. Okay, so less what is AI and more like Loams gives me the keys to the AI car to actually drive it. Exactly. And not just one type of car either. Mm -hmm. Loams, it can connect to various large language models. Okay. You know, LLMs. LLMs. Think of LLMs as the engines of AI. They're trained on massive amounts of data to understand and generate, you know, human-like text. Oh, wow. So if LLMs are the engines, is Loams the steering wheel and the gas pedal? More like the whole dashboard. Yeah. It gives you those controls, you know, the interface and the structure to actually put those powerful LLMs to work for you. Okay, so I'm seeing user guides here for coding a snake game, creating art for NFTs, yeah. even personalities that can mimic famous figures. Is it really that easy? Loams is designed to be user-friendly. Oh, okay. Even if you're not a coding wizard or anything. Right. It's like, remember how we were talking about predicting the next word in a sentence? Yeah. LOMs, they work similarly, but on a grander scale. You give it once upon, and it says time. Right. Right. They've analyzed so much text data, uh -uh. they can predict and generate human-like text in incredibly creative ways. And Loams lets you harness that power. So how does it actually work? I'm seeing something about personalities in these guides. Ah, yes. Personalities. This is where Loams gets really, really interesting. Okay. They're like specialized AI assistants oh. within Loams. Mm. So imagine you need to write Python code, right? Yeah. There's a personality for that. Want to create digital art? Right. There's a personality for that too. Okay, that's cool. So instead of one general AI, it's like having a whole team of specialists built in. And we get to choose who we're working with. Precisely. Yeah. And these personalities, they're built using text conditioning and custom code. Okay. Which guides the AI's behavior for specific tasks. We even have information here about a tree of thoughts personality. A tree of thoughts. Yeah. Which tackles complex problems by breaking them down into smaller, more manageable thoughts. So it's not just what the AI knows, but how it thinks that we can customize. Yes. That's wild. Yeah. Okay, so walk me through actually using Loams. Oh, okay. Is it difficult to set up? Not at all. One of the things that makes Loams so fantastic is how user-friendly it is. Okay. For example, if you are using Windows, right. you simply download an installation script from their repository, you run it, and just follow the prompts. Okay. It even guides you on whether to use your CPU or GPU. Okay. Which are essentially the brains and brawn of your computer. Right, right. Yeah. So even if someone isn't, you know, super techie, they can still get this up and running. Absolutely. And here's a fascinating detail for you. Loams can even run on less powerful devices, mm -hmm. like Raspberry Pis, for example. Oh. Imagine something the size of a credit card. Right. Connecting to a central, more powerful machine and harnessing AI. Yeah. That's a game changer. That is amazing. Yeah. It's like bringing powerful AI to, you know, the everyday user. So exactly. So say I have Loams installed. What's next? Do I pick which AI model I want to use? You got it. Choosing the right AI model. Okay. It's a bit like picking the right tool for a job. Okay. So you need to tackle some heavy-duty language tasks. Right. There's a large, powerful model for that. Right. You want something fast and efficient. Yeah. There's a smaller model that'll do the trick. Sounds pretty flexible. So where do these AI models come from? Wolms has something called the Model Zoo. The Model Zoo. Yeah, it's a collection of pre-trained AI models for all sorts of tasks. Oh, wow. And many are free and open source. Oh. Meaning they are accessible to everyone. That's awesome. So I can browse these models, see what they're good at, and pick one that fits my needs. Exactly. This Model Zoo is a treasure trove for anyone looking to explore the capabilities of AI. Right. From generating creative text formats to like translating languages. Okay. And Loams makes it easy to connect to them. Okay, hold on. How do these models actually plug into Loams? That's where bindings come in. Bindings? Yeah, think of bindings like adapters that let you plug different devices into your computer. Right, right. So Loams bindings, they let it communicate with various AI models. Oh, okay. Regardless of how they were originally designed. Yeah. So Loams can speak the language of all these different AI models. Exactly. This means 
Bums isn't limited to just one type of model or library, right? Right. Which significantly expands its capabilities and makes it highly adaptable. This is already blowing my mind, and we've only just scratched the surface. Yeah. It seems like we've covered, you know, the basics, what Lums is, how it works, how to get started. Right. But I'm ready to dive into these personalities. There's a lot to explore. Yeah. Each personality unlocks a whole new set of capabilities within Lums. Okay. Like take the art bot, for example. Okay. You were curious about its potential for generating art, especially for NFTs. Absolutely. One of these sources walks us through how someone used it to do just that. Right. What's the deal with that? Think of ArtBot as your AI art collaborator. It uses text prompts, essentially descriptions, okay. to guide the AI in creating an image. So instead of me trying to like perfectly describe a psychedelic robot playing chess, right. ArtBot can help me refine that idea. Precisely. So, it can even suggest like variations on those prompts, okay. helping you explore different artistic directions and you know refine your vision. And then does it actually create the artwork itself? Like using those, you know, AI image generators we hear so much about. Exactly. It acts as the bridge between you and those powerful image generation models. Okay. So instead of you grappling with complex interfaces, right. you have ArtBot making it all much more user friendly. That opens up so many possibilities, even for someone who, like, doesn't consider themselves an artist. Exactly. ArtBot empowers you to experiment with different styles, generate unique imagery, and even explore, you know, the, those trendy NFTs in a whole new way. Okay, ArtBot is definitely going on my list to explore. But what about, like, the more technical stuff, like that Python specialist we mentioned earlier? I... It can actually help with coding. It can, and it's not just a gimmick. Okay. There's a source here where someone used the Python specialist to code a full-fledged snake game. What? Yeah, and it's pretty remarkable how naturally it all works. So I can just, like, chat with this Python specialist, yeah. tell it what I want to code, almost like I'm talking to a human programmer. You got it. The Python specialist, it's been trained on a massive amount of Python code. Wow. It understands the language, the logic, even good coding practices. So in the source, did the user just tell it to like make a snake game and it just it just did it? Pretty much. Yeah. And it wasn't just spitting out lines of code either. Okay. The Python specialist actually walked the user through the process. Oh wow. Explaining what it was doing, even adding comments to the code, you know. Right. To make it understandable for, you know, a human to read. <laughs> so like having a coding tutor available twenty four seven. Right. Without them judging your every line of code. That's incredible. Uh, what's even more impressive is that the user was able to get help with debugging. Really? Yeah. So when the code wasn't working, right. they could just describe the problem to the Python specialist. Okay. And it would suggest solutions or even like modify the code directly. Wow, that's a game changer. And not just for like learning to code, but for experienced programmers as well, I imagine. Exactly. The Python specialist is just one example of how Loams is breaking down those barriers yeah. and making these complex tasks achievable. Yeah. It's all about expanding accessibility and making those powerful tools available to everyone. I'm seeing a pattern here. Yeah. These personalities aren't just fun gimmicks. Right. But genuinely useful tools. Yeah. What if I wanted to, say, use Loams to, like, research something on the internet. Well, for that, there's a personality aptly named Lord of the Internet. It does exactly that. Okay, so my own personal AI researcher at my beck and call. Yes. That sounds incredibly useful. It is, and we have a source here that dives into how it works. Okay. They asked Lord of the Internet about the latest news from OpenAI, and the results are pretty impressive. Okay, but how is that different from, like, just me Googling it myself. This isn't just a search engine spitting out links. Okay. Okay. Lord of the Internet, it actually accessed the web, found relevant information, oh. and then synthesized it into this clear, concise answer. Okay. It even cited its sources. Wow. So it's doing the heavy lifting? Yes. Of finding, reading, and summarizing information from, like, across the Internet. Exactly. It's like a, like a super-powered research assistant. It is. It takes research to a whole new level, right? Right. Saving you time and effort by doing the, the legwork for you. Yeah. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. All of this has me thinking about the bigger picture, right? Okay. We're talking about AI that can generate our right code, do our research, all at our command. What does this mean for the future? That's the million dollar question, isn't uh -huh. it? And one we should definitely explore. It's like we've been talking about all these different ways AI could change things. And Loams is giving us 
a front row seat. And not just a front row seat, right. but a chance to participate. Right. Remember how we talked about Loam's being open source? Right. Not just some big company controlling everything. Exactly. And one of the sources actually highlights how users can create and share their own personalities for Loam's. Really? Yeah. They call it a collaborative ecosystem. So it's not just like the personalities that exist now, but like the potential for any kind of AI assistant someone dreams up. Exactly. Right. Imagine a community of users, each contributing their unique expertise and creating these, you know, specialized personalities for all sorts of tasks. Wow. The possibilities become almost limitless. That's incredible. I'm picturing someone with like, you know, hyper specific knowledge, yeah. like, I don't know, identifying antique buttons, but suddenly having this AI tool they built to share with the world. Precisely. And that's the beauty of open source projects, right? Yeah. It's about harnessing that collective intelligence, mm -hmm. breaking down those barriers of access, and allowing everyone to contribute to the advancement of AI. This whole deep dive has been such a fascinating journey. Yeah. You know, we went from the basics of LOMS to exploring these incredible personalities. Right. And now it feels like we're, like, on the edge of something truly groundbreaking. We are. Yeah. And the most exciting part is, this is just the beginning. Right. As more people discover LOMS, experiment with it, and contribute to its development, yeah. we can expect even more innovative personalities and groundbreaking applications to emerge. So what does it all mean? Like, if someone's listening to this and thinking, okay, this LOMS thing sounds cool, but what can I actually do with it? That's the beauty of it. Yeah. LOMS provides the tools, the resources, the community. Right. What you do with it is limited only by your imagination. You're right. Want to build a chatbot that can help you write a song? Yeah. Go for it. Need an AI assistant that can analyze data and generate reports? Right. Loams can help you do that, too. It's like you said at the beginning, it's more than just talking about AI. Right. It's about actually using it. Yes. And Loams gives everyone the keys to do just that. Yeah. Exactly. It's about empowering individuals, fostering collaboration, and shaping the future of AI in a way that benefits everyone. Well, on that inspiring note, yeah, I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. Okay. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the you know technical nuts and bolts, right, to the you know expansive possibilities of open source AI. And the most important takeaway is that this is just the beginning. Yeah. Loams represents a paradigm shift in how we interact with and utilize AI. Right. It's an exciting time to be involved in this rapidly evolving field. Absolutely. So if you're ready to explore the world of Loams and see what AI can really do, you have all the tools and inspiration you need. There you go. Dive in. Get creative. Yeah. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one developing the next groundbreaking AI personality. Thanks for watching.